Sometimes the frag 12 rounds wouldn't detonate on impact due to the fleshy skin texture of the demons. Demons? Ha! They look more like failed lab experiments that were a mixture of Swiss cheese and a housefly. The AA-12 chugged out explosive shells and that devastated creatures. They hissed and screeched as they flew at me. I took over behind a stone pillar just to cover behind a stone pillar just as one of the demons launched a magical green blast at me. I noticed that the magazine was empty and loaded a fresh one. I only had this this one and the next one. Then I was out. Damn it. I really wish that I had my old guns. I stepped out from behind the cover of the pillar and fired m mercilessly upon the creatures. Just as I was about to duck behind a pillar, they w wised up and scampered off. I took close aim. I took close aim on one of the fleeing creatures. I gave the trigger a quick pull and fired upon a single round that connected with its rear and detonated. The creature began to howl in pain and squirm around furiously. I checked the load. Empty again. Damn! I muttered to myself, even though it had a, it had a relatively mediocre fire rate. It was still, it still ate through ammo rather quickly. I slipped the last magazine into the shotgun and then slung it across my back as I drew the Glock. I wanted to keep the AA-12 handy for anything I anything a little bit heavier and stronger for the first demon I killed. I began to stalk down the hallways that, which were now pretty much empty, save for a few glances I'd catch of one of the demons scampering out of the sight. I began to pace down a hallway, then suddenly a voice entered my head. Over here, it called. Over where? I asked as I looked around, keeping my Glock at, at a ready. Something just didn't seem right about this. In a room to your left. Do not worry. I won't harm you. Whispered in, the thought, in my thoughts. Okay, when someone says I won't harm you, I won't hurt you, it usually means they're going to hurt you and they just want you to lower your guard, or or they need my help. I slowly opened the door, letting my pistol lead the way. Compared to my Desert Eagle, this pistol was like carrying a feather, which was rather nice. As I entered the room, I spotted a large demon-looking looking thing, but this was this one was different. It had more character to it and looked feminine. God damn it! <laughs> I loaded the pistol, pistol sight on her, but she didn't move. She didn't. She couldn't move. She was bound to a chair. She chuckled. Please, don't shoot me. I mean you no harm. She laughed rather calmly. Those your demons out there? I asked as she nodded. So I guess that means that you're a demon too? I asked, but she looked me. She shook her head. We are not demons. We are changelings. My hat hive was brainwashed by Trixie and her new partner whom she summoned from beyond the grave. She informed me. I still kept my pistol ready, but lowered the sights from her body as I approached her. They took my hive from me, and I kept my... They kept, and pop, they kept, I, uh, <laughs> kept me locked up for this. For if I was to escape, I could break the spell they have on my hive. I raised an eyebrow. So, I guess that's where I come in. You need me to free you so you can get your hive back. And just by chance, are you going to try and take over Equestria? You don't strike me as one of the good guys. I asked with a curiosity. With curiosity, she laughed briefly. Well, in the future, yes. I do plan to conquer Equestria, but believe me when I say it won't be now. My hive is too weak, especially with the casualties you just inflicted. I can feel your s feel her suffering, you know, she said with slight ir irritation in her voice. It's not like it was my fault I killed her friends. I mean, they were trying to kill me, so I just returned a favor. So, I let you free, you take back your hive, then what? I asked. She tried to shrug and... She chair but couldn't due to the ropes t tying her down then we all go our separate ways and you go back to your life mingling with mingling while I go re <laughs> while I go resurrect strength in my hive so that one day I can conquer Equestria she informed me I really didn't want to let her free but if she could stop all those bug things when then it would make my life easier it would make m make your life it would make your life easier she replied almost as if she read my mind I looked to her with a shocked expression. She giggled. Yes, that's right. I read your mind. I gulped and paced her around to her backside to entire, but found that she was tied up pretty good. I knelt down, but one of one of my peripheral vision, I spotted a large blade coming toward me. I spun to face it and noticed a green aura surrounding it. Her horn was glowing as well. I pressed the barrel of the Glock to the back of her head. In turn, she simply laughed. Relax. I'm not going to stab you. Use it to cut, the, cut me free, she told me calmly. Why didn't you just use your magic to cut yourself free in the first place? Because I needed someone who could help me. If I hadn't found you, then I wouldn't have been able to retrieve my hive. Now cut me loose, she ordered. I took the blade, which looked something like a bowie knife, and cut the rope. She stood up and brushed off the rope still clinging to her body and, stu and stuck in her holes. 
Why do you have all have those holes anyway? I asked. Increases pleasure during. Oh my god! <laughs> during intercourse, she <laughs> told me, and we exchanged pleasantries. Wait, no. Uh, she replied, and I gulped in shock. I'm just kidding. It's a part of my body. It, just like those fingers of yours are part of yours. The holes are simply a body genetic. Not really a straight answer, but I sort of understood what she said. <laughs> I can't believe she said that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go stop this. I told her, and she nodded. The name's Chrysalis. Told me, and we exchanged pleasantries. To my surprise, she ended up leading me, saying she knew where Trixie was. We ended up at at two large doors, which were locked and a little too big for me to just boot down. I motioned for her to step back, then unslung the A12. I leveled it at the hip and emptied the entire magazine capacity into the door. The frag 12 rounds made, made quick work of the wooden furnished doors and quickly blew them to splinters. I dropped a still smoking shotgun in the small clutter of green shotgun shells and, shotgun shells and smiled as I proceeded through the doorway. We both entered the throne room where Trixie and a weird stuff. A weird stallion look thing, looking thing, the element of harmony bearers, and both princesses stood. Other than Trixie and the stallion, they all had a gray tone to their body. I leveled the Glock on Trixie. Surprise, bitch! I chuckled, but she didn't laugh, and neither did her friend who had purple smoke whisking from his eyes. Oh, I know who this is. <laughs> no surprise. Trixie knew you were coming. Trixie laughed. And how'd you know that? Because Trixie has her, she replied and pointed to Floor, who was being dragged in by two of the insect things. I kept my aim on Trixie. Please lower your gun. It's insulting, she ordered, but I didn't listen. Floor, I thought I told you to stay in the truck. I called her, but she shrugged embarrassingly. I always wanted to see Cantalotta Royal Gardens, she replied, and I, sim I sighed depressingly. Why would she want to see it at a time like this? Crystal Sleet leaned over. Trust me. It's a beautiful place, she told me, and almost like she had read my... Get out of my head! I whispered back, and Trixie became annoyed with her, with our whispering. What are you whispering about? The Grand Pavel Trixie demands to know, she ordered, and I looked at her with an unimpressed look. Who's a stallion? A demon? I chuckled, and she nodded triumphantly. This is the one and only King Sombra, Lord of Darkness, she announced like it was a big deal. Pfft! I leveled the Glock and fired six rounds quick succession, but all the rounds pinged off his chest. Armor which resembled medieval-styled armor. Shit, I muttered. This is why I missed my, de missed my desert eagle. Surprise! Sombra sneered and fired a blast of black energy at me. The blast struck me right in the chest and sent my body skidding across the f ground, making, my, making me lose my grip around a Glock. I got up. My jacket had been severe, severely scorched from the blast, and luckily my chest was only sting stinging but not bleeding. Sombra fired another blast. I quickly rolled out of the way and behind a stone pillar. Chrysalis! A little help? I yelled and noticed she was had disappeared. Great. Wait a minute. Abjack has my gun. I peeked out to see that Abjack did indeed still have her saddle, with, which probably still has my Desert Eagle. Sombra fired another blast at me, and I ducked it a little late. The blast blew away a chunk of pillar and severely pier sever severely pieces several pieces cut up the left side of my face. But they were only minor. I peeked to look out again, only to have Sombra fire another blast at me. I quickly stood up and then dashed out from behind a pillar to the cover of another. I needed to get to the Applejack, but couldn't at the moment because there were was no cover near her. Here, said a fami vaguely familiar voice. I turned to see Chrysalis with my Desert Eagle and ammo belt. How the hell did she do that? Magic, she replied. I really needed to stop thinking with her around. Okay, you distract him and I'll kill him, I suggested. Killing is a little harsh, don't you think? You have a better idea? Nope, she applied, and that was the end of the quick argument. I held the Desert Eagle and pulled back the slit, uh, the slid before releasing it and letting it slam shut. Christ, this was a nice gun. The gun had excessive weight for a pistol, but the that helped compensate the recoil. However, the cons were balanced by the gun's tremendous firepower for a pistol, an uncanny knack to penetrate light armor. Now the question was, is his armor light enough for the 50 caliber round to penetrate? Crystals took off into plain view, gaining Sombra's attention. I rushed in the opposite direction, gaining Trixie's attention. Sombra fired a blast of energy at Crystals, but she blocked it with a blast of her own. I leapt, I leapt roll, rolled, then came to the crouch stance and took 
close aim with a massive handgun. Sombra and I had about a 40 meter separation, so it would be a little more than a diff difficult for a headshot. I fired a round into his chest. The bullet failed to penetrate, but made a large indent into his chest plate, which made him screech in agony. The force knocked him back, but he kept his footing. I fired another round, which slammed his chest again, making another dent, and once again knocking him back. Blam, 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 blam! The Desert Eagle thundered in the throne room. Each round would knock his balance off and send him staggering back. Three of the rounds penetrated his armor and made him screech painfully as blood trickled out, out onto his shining armor. My final shot was a little, little of off target, but ended up clipping his jugular. Oh my god! He fell back in pain and shock. Trixie now realized her plan had been foiled, quickly formed a magic spell and vanished into a smoke cloud. As Sombra squirmed on the floor, Chrysalis and I approached his dying body. I slid a fresh magazine into the handgun and holstered it. Sombra took a final wheezing breath and passed away. As he died, the faded the faded coloring around the others disappeared and they returned normal. They all gasped at the sight of Chrysalis and myself, but let out a more shocking gasp when they spotted Sombra's dead body. Flora's the only one who looked like she knew what had happened, due to her not being brainwashed or whatever it was. Sister approached us both slowly. What happened? Dale, did you... You saved Equestria again. You're a hero, she gasped, and I sighed, then let Chrysalis, who already was already leaving. Chrissy over there is a hero. She saved the day. If it wasn't for her, then this wouldn't have ended as nicely, I told them. Sister turned to Chrysalis, who had now stopped and was looking back to me with a curious look, though she had a small and faint smile on her face. Flew leapt onto me while I was ex while I was expecting <laughs> while I wasn't expecting it, covering my face with a fury of kisses. Sister giggled. So what happens now? Flora asked, and I sighed. I still have one last loose end to tie up. 